Did you know that you could dynamically filter data in Power BI using parameters that are stored in an Excel workbook? Well, if you didn't, you're about to find out. All coming up next. Hey guys, Patrick, Guy in the Cube. It's been a crazy week. I just got a crazy, crazy mind blowing request from one of my customers. We were, we were talking about parameters and store procedures and parameters in the Power BI desktop and parameters passing data from Excel. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to give an end user a Power BI desktop, allow them to call a store procedure, pass some parameters, but then when they were done, they wanted to pu publish it to the Power BI service. And once it was up in the service, enter some data in the spreadsheet. And when they refreshed, it will pull the data from the spreadsheet and automatically filter the report based on the values in that spreadsheet. So I was like, well, sounds like a good challenge. Let me show you how to do this, all right? Give me some time. And so it's crazy. So let me show you how, guys how to do this, all right? So the first thing you need is a store procedure. So open up the Power BI desktop and get your store procedure. So I'm gonna go over here in Management Studio. I love Management Studio. You can't see it, it's on the other screen, but I'm gonna choose Get Data. Get Data, and I'm gonna choose SQL Server. And grab your server name, paste it there. Give me a database name, Hire it, DW. I work in education, Microsoft. I'm always working with education data. All right, the next thing you do, we may have, a lot of people may not even know this. New, new. a lot of people may not even, have no idea that this was possible. You can actually call a store procedure from the desktop. So I'm gonna grab an execution of a store procedure. What I'm gonna do is paste it right there, okay? So I'm connecting to this SQL Server, this database, and I'm gonna execute the store procedure. Go ahead and click OK. After you click OK, for a couple of seconds, what's gonna happen, voila, bam! The data from that store procedure. Don't click load, click edit. So we'll click edit, I'm excited, okay? And so now I have my data, but the request was, hey, they need to pass in their own parameters, their own values for that execution. So the first thing I said, hey, go to advanced editor, go here, change it. He was like, really, Patrick? They don't know how to do that. I was like, okay, 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 okay. I'm just kidding, I kid, I kid. All right, so what you wanna do is first let's create a parameter. If you guys haven't used parameters, I'm gonna talk about them a little more um, and kind of demystify them in another video. But for now, let's just focus on this type of parameter. So we're gonna do manage parameters, click new parameter. And what they were passing is a student ID. So we're gonna call this guy student ID and we're gonna give it, um, use any value. We'll talk about list of values and queries in another video. And then we're gonna make it text and then we'll grab a student ID, paste it in and click okay. Okay, so there's our parameter. But now we wanna make the query, query one, which is a great name, uh, use it. So we'll go back to query one, right click on this guy and go to advanced editor and watch this. I want you guys to pay attention to what I'm about to do. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that value and type ampersand student ID. If that's the name of my parameter, perfect, it is. Make sure you don't have any errors down at the bottom, click done and now, you see that nothing really happens, but it actually executed the store procedure. What I'm gonna do is, let's be a little adventurous. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another student value. I'm gonna come here, paste it. You see, you should see a little warning sign like that, a little warning sign next to the query one. It's because you're running a native query and I talked to my compadre, Adam Saxton, and he's like, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. He's like, oh, this is not great. But wait, I'm gonna show you how to solve this. Just hang on. All right, click edit permissions. You'll get the native query box, click run. And then what you'll see is after the query successfully executes, um, you'll see the same number as your parameter in the student AK. Perfect, perfect. So if we close and apply this, okay, get our, our changes applied. And what we're gonna do is if I go edit queries and you see right there, edit parameters, we can actually change that value. Click OK, and we'll get our little prompt again because of our native query run. And if we run it, and just jump over and take a peek at the data, uh, and you'll see now it's the new student ID that I passed parameter. So I was like, all right, there you go, that's it, you got it. He's like, no, 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 not gonna work. It's like, what do you mean? He's like, they they wanna 
passed multiple students in and created a report showing data for multiple students. It's like, oh man, okay. And it's like, okay, you can do that, no problem. So what I did was I created a spreadsheet form. It's a really complicated spreadsheet. It says a single column spreadsheet, 7204721, student ID, right? Have that guy there, I'm gonna make sure it's save, minimize it, and I'm gonna get that data, right? I have this folder called cube videos, we'll grab student, and you'll see it pop open. Go ahead and get it right there, and make sure you click edit, okay? Because we wanna go back into the query editor because we're about to have a little fun right now. And now you can see sheet one, let's rename this to student ID. And because I specified my parameter as text, I'm gonna go ahead and match these two up, right? So I'm gonna change it from a whole number, just to text, so I don't have any data conversion problems. It just makes it easier. And we're gonna call this our students, okay? So now we have our students table, we have our query. How do I pass the values from that Excel spreadsheet into the store procedure run, into query one? Well, watch this. So right click on query one and choose create function. Yup, create function. And we're gonna call this get student details and click okay. So now I have my function and I'm gonna disable, what I'm gonna do right here is say, disable the load. And I just don't want that to show up in my, my field list. I like to keep my field list kind of tidy for my end users, okay? And so now we have our students and we have our function and our function right here accepts a single parameter. Now watch, watch the magic, watch the magic that's about to happen. Click students, go to add column and there's this icon label invoke custom function. You guys created a custom function. Let's run it, let's invoke this thing, all right? So I'm gonna invoke my custom function and it's called, uh, don't worry about the column name, just don't worry about that. Select get student details, and we're gonna pass the value from that single field, which is student ID, we can name it student ID, that's stored in that spreadsheet. It's pretty cool, All right? Click okay. All right, again, gotta run our query. And what you'll see is a single row for the student ID that's stored in that spreadsheet. You don't believe me, I'll open the spreadsheet up. There's the student ID. Look in the spreadsheet, there's a student ID. And then there's, it says table. In the top right corner, there's two arrows pointing that way, All right? Click those two arrows. It's gonna say what you wanna do. We don't need to bring in student AK, which is our student ID. We already have that one. And you don't need to check the box for use original column names as prefix, because what it, what it will do is it'll prefix the column name and then add the column name again. We don't wanna do that, right? Click OK, and now I can see all my data. What, what, are you kidding me? So I'm gonna show you something. So I'm gonna go and add another one. All I'm gonna do is go to my spreadsheet, add another one, all right? Save this. What I'm gonna do here is go ahead and go home and I added a new student to the spreadsheet. Now what I'm gonna do is click refresh preview. So I click refresh preview, it says yes, because I added a new one, it's gotta run the query again and watch this. And now you see two students and it's both of the students that's in that spreadsheet. Patrick, you're a genius. Eh, just pretty smart, right? Okay, this is cool, but I keep getting that edit queries, native query, run query, edit permissions, all that stuff. I wanna avoid that. Let me show you how to avoid it. Okay, just like a cooking show. Remember, like a cooking show, bam. I'm gonna switch over to one that I already created. Okay, so what you would do before I hop over there, let me back up a little bit. What you would do is close and apply. Okay, so if I click close and apply, you'll see I have my students table and I can start building my report, all right? So, Let's see, what did I do wrong? So I did, I forgot to check that box for prefix, but that's all right. Let's go back to edit queries and let's do this. Student, and let's go here. Uh, get rid of that, my bad. Okay, now it's a little better. There we go. And click close and apply, make mistakes. We're all human, right? There we go. Now our column names are a little better, okay? But like a cooking show, now I wanna switch over to a report that I already created based on this. So I have this, this report that I created and it's using my function and you can see the results of my function. I call it student details. So you can see I have some stuff, a nice little report I created. What I did was 
I installed the gateway on my machine. On this laptop, I installed the personal gateway because I was doing some testing. You can install the enterprise gateway or whatever. Um, since this is for an end user, they'll probably install the on-premises, I mean the personal gateway for their own you know, purposes. And then I published this up to Power BI. Once I had it published up to Power BI, what I did was, so I went to manage gateways because it's my personal gateway, right? Don't worry about the one with all the warning signs. And I set up both of my data sources. So my Excel workbook that contains the values that I wanna pass, and then I set it up to the data that I'm pulling. I set it up to the SQL server that contains the store procedure, right? Where I'm gonna execute the store procedure. So I set those two data sources up. And then what you can do is take a look at my report. Let's just take a look at my report so you guys get a sense of what's there. It's got one value and it's got a couple of things in it, okay? And so now in my spreadsheet, I have, I mean, let's just add one more, five more, right? So I'm gonna delete these because I don't care about those anymore. Paste those in there, click save. And then what I'm gonna go do is because I set up everything, my schedule refresh is available, also my on-demand refresh. So I'm gonna go to that report. I called it model. The data set is called model. I'm gonna go ahead and say refresh now. And then we wait and now bam what you can see is that the values in my spreadsheet take a peek right that one 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 right now my report matches it imagine this so i give my end users the ability to have data in a spreadsheet or data in whatever flat file source that they want to dynamically pass to a Power BI report running in the Power BI service and it'll automatically filter their data. It'll just filter, it'll take away, it'll add. It's phenomenal. Got a better way to do it? Please let me know. What do you think about this video? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did I talk too fast? Um, whatever it is, you know, let me know. Post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you like my video, please give it two thumbs up, all right? Thank you guys. And from Adam and Patrick at Guy in the Cube, Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.